This is Lit Squad. I'm Mark Brody. There's been a lot of talk over the last year or so about the kinds of books students should and should not be reading in school and what books kids should have access to in libraries. At the same time, there are more books being published that deal with issues of race, gender, and sexual orientation. In this series, we talk to the authors of some of those books. This episode features Kyle Lukoff, a former elementary school librarian and the author of several books, including Call Me Max and Too Bright to See. We spoke with him about his book, Different Kinds of Fruit, published in 2022. In it, sixth grader Annabelle Blake not only finds out she has a crush on her non-binary classmate, but also that her dad is a transgender man. Here's my conversation with Kyle Lukoff. In some ways, this to me feels like a very typical middle grade novel where it's about, you know, a kid figuring out who she is, who her family is, how she fits into the world around her. But it is true that I am exploring themes that aren't as common in books for kids this age. But it also just comes from like my life, my community, the people that I surround myself with. So I tried to make it both new and familiar at the same time. So how do you try to take on these themes that... A lot of, I would imagine, your readers are dealing with or know people who are dealing with, but try to write about them in a way that that relates to them, that they can relate to, that kind of makes sense to them. I mostly just remember what it was like to be a school librarian, where my entire job was both reading books to kids and also helping kids find answers to their questions. So, you know, you have a fifth grade, like I had a fifth grader who ran into the library and said that she was reading The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. And I also had a fifth grader who only wanted to check out a pop-up book about a frog. So it really takes knowing all the different stages that these kids are at and finding language that manages to be nuanced enough for those who are ready for it, but accessible enough for those who are only able to read a more like surface level story. How challenging is that to do? Um, well, I think that I'm very good at it. I don't find it to be that hard because again, I, you know, I spent eight years doing this for a living and, you know, I was also out as a trans person at my school, which means that I also had experience explaining it to kindergartners and also to fifth graders. I could talk about it with kids who themselves identified as, you know, LGBTQ and also for kids to kids for whom this was brand new to them. It just took practice. And I think that all that practice goes into writing my books. So based on your time as a librarian, are there a lot of books for middle readers, young adults that take on these subjects? That is starting to expand. Ten years ago, there were very, very, very few, but now there are a lot more. I don't see as many where the parents are themselves trans. And in some ways, I think that that's still territory that is underexplored. But there's way more LGBTQ themed middle grade now than there was even, you know, five years ago. Why do you think that is? Why do you think more writers are starting to write about this? Uh, I think it's because publishing is more open to publishing them, right? Like, I think we've always wanted to write books. Like, there's always been people from my communities who want to tell stories. But I think that in a lot of ways, the industry and the market wasn't as open to them as they are now. You know, I think that it took a lot of authors like Alex Gino, like David Levithan, to start breaking down those barriers and showing that not only are these stories, you know, profitable, but they're also, they can also be good. Well, if publishers are willing to publish these books now, and clearly they wouldn't if there wasn't a market for them, does that in any way indicate to you how society is moving? If parents and, and young adults, middle readers are willing to buy these books? I mean, that's very complicated, right? Like on the one hand, my books are getting published and I am able to make a living from them. On the other hand, my books are now literally illegal in a couple states and there are concerted efforts all across this country to get them removed from schools, libraries, and bookstores. So I think with, as with any other movement, there is both progress and violent backlash. Have you yourself faced backlash over the the content of, of your books? Oh, yes. Oh, very much so. Uh, I was somewhat of a a canary in a coal mine uh, over a year ago when one of my books, Call Me Max, was the subject of major controversy both in Utah and Texas, and it has only gotten worse and worse and worse since then. One of my my books was on stage behind Governor DeSantis of Florida as he signed the Don't Say Gay bill. Wow. Yeah, a blown-up illustration was, like, on stage with him. 
what goes through your mind when you see that? Uh, panic. I don't like that they know my name. Yeah. So you referenced that the number of books about these kinds of issues, uh, there are more of them now. I'm wondering if when you were growing up, if there was a book or maybe there were books that you read that really spoke to you about who you were and, and what your reality was. That question has been hard for me to answer ever since people started asking me it, because I have sort of the obvious response, like, you know, the All of a Kind family book was the first book that I read that had Jewish characters. And then I was really excited when there was finally a Jewish babysitter in the Babysitter's Club. Um, I didn't know that I was queer or trans when I was a kid. So there weren't books that like explicitly spoke to me about that, even if they existed, which I'm not sure if they did. But when I reread books that I loved as a kid, I keep finding things in them that shaped me in ways that I wasn't conscious of. So like I read Autobiography, Autobiography of a Face by Lucy Greeley many, 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 many times in middle school, which is about a poet talking about her battle with cancer and then the reconstructive surgery she had following it. I didn't have cancer. I never had reconstructive surgery on my jaw, but something about a woman talking about both like pain and also pleasure and also feeling disconnected from her body while also feeling like tethered to her body got to me on a level that I didn't understand until I reread it as a trans adult. I was also obsessed with the Anastasia Krepnik books by Lois Lowry, which I didn't remember until I reread one and realized that I'm literally just Anastasia and that Annabelle and Different Kinds of Fruit is kind of a mixture of Anastasia and her little brother, Sam. That's so interesting that you were drawn to some of these books that you read, as you say, many, many times. And it's only as an adult that you kind of understand why or, or that they you really maybe get some of the, the deeper messages in them. That's fascinating. And I'm sure that there's other books that did that for me that I just haven't come across again. And if I were to, I would say, oh, man, this book got to me. And I, only now do I know why. But it's so deeply buried in my memory that that I don't even know what they are yet. All right. That is Kyle Lukoff, a former elementary school librarian. He's also an author. New book called Different Kinds of Fruit. Kyle, it was really nice to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Mark. I had a great time, too. You've been listening to Lit Squad. An earlier version of the story appeared on KJZZ's The Show. If you like this episode, subscribe and leave a rating wherever you get your podcast. Lit Squad is a KJZZ original production. It was produced by Sativa Peterson. I'm Mark Brody. Until next time, thanks for listening.